Hi folks, Dr. Bob McCauley, Paul Bragg's biggest mistake. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss any of my health updates. I grew up in the 1960s and um, I started getting into health like in the 80s, you know, so I, I was around 20, 20 years old. I started getting into health, but you know, even before that, I heard about two guys that were really influential in, uh, in, in health. They were both from California and they really started the, the natural health um, movement. And those guys were Paul Bragg and Jack LaLanne. In the early 2000s, when I first really started getting into natural health and saw what I could do with it and saw the potential that you could live disease-free for the rest of your life, you know, I started a radio program. It was called Achieving Great Health. I actually had two different uh, segments. I was at one in 2001, and then I did it again in 2003, 4, and 5. So it was about two and a half years there that I did it all the time. I did it every single day, uh, five times a week. And rarely, I rarely, I just tried to get everybody on that program I possibly could. It was like an early podcast. People had barely heard of what was called a podcast at that time. So I started doing these, and two people I did manage to get on was Patricia Bragg, Paul Bragg's daughter, and Jack LaLanne. Patricia Bragg was a lot of fun. Um, she talked about standing naked in front of a, near, a mirror and just looking at yourself and looking at your beautiful body. I had her on twice. Uh, she lives in Hawaii. She used to do this exercise thing every day. She's still around. I met her once um, and I have a picture of her. <laughs> She's about that tall. And so she was a lot of fun. And then I had on Jack LaLanne. Jack LaLanne was a lot of fun, real professional. He was right at the end of his career. He was beginning to forget things. I had him on twice. And um, he he really liked me a lot. Bob, I want to say one yeah. thing to your audience. Yes, your sir. Your audience, I want to let you know that Bob is one of the finest men I've ever known. He spends his time helping people, giving him the truth. And I hope that each and every one of you that are listening to us this morning will do something for the most important person on this earth, you. Start in today. Start eating better. Start eating the whole grain products, more fruits and vegetables and get exercising. This is so important. If you can't, just don't sit there. Do something. Worry. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> just don't lay down and die. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty happy about those kind words from Jack. Jack LaLanne invented the exercise show. I mean, nobody had ever done anything like this. Get on TV and exercise. I mean, people thought, what, what, what are you going to do? Is just watch somebody exercise? I mean, he made it interesting. He was a natural. And as far as I under my understanding is, he got paid almost nothing for all these shows, and he was on for years and years and years. Well, Paul Bragg actually really he started the health food movement and the natural health movement in California. I mean, he invented the health food store, and that you have you, the thing you have today. He he popularized apple cider vinegar. You see Brad's apple cider vinegar everywhere. I've got my own brand now. It's not Bragg's, but uh, you know it's great stuff. So. You know, he's done all those things. He was the pioneer. But the one thing he had wrong, Paul Bragg, was he promoted purified water. And he promoted it a lot. He wrote a book called The Shocking Truth About Water. And, um, and I remember getting that book, and, and I read it through. And it's one of the things that he was 100% wrong about. Uh, and that's very few because, honestly, Paul Bragg, again, this guy's a pioneer. I have just learned the science of living on natural foods. Jack LaLanne, a pioneer, they, they're all buddies out there, you know. They knew you missed your universe and they worked out with them. I mean, these guys were the ones that started everything and they started in California. And that's why when you go out to California these days, it's still such, you know, the, the empire of the health food industry, although it is being ruined by Prop 65. has just become something for, for the lawyers so they can sue everybody that happens to be in the, in the, in the health business. That's what it's about. Paul Bragg started all this, but his, his ideas on purified water were just completely wrong. 
And there's another one of the great health gurus out there, Norman Walker. He was a purified water guy. And, you know, I mean, I learned a lot from Norman Walker, but um, he's wrong about purified water. You're, he's just 100% wrong. You do not put a purified substance into your body. You will not find purified water in nature. Rainwater is not purified water. You will not find purified substances of any kind in their liquid or gaseous states in nature. It just doesn't happen. As soon as something comes into nature that's pure, it's going to mix with something else. That's just the that's the nature of nature. It's just the nature of things. It always wants to balance itself out. It always, if it's extremely acidic, it's going to become very alkaline or want to balance itself very very quickly. And if it's very pure, like purified water, it's going to first thing it's going to want to do is mix itself with something else. So many other things in this book, uh, the shocking truth about water. Uh, that Paul Bragg has right. He talk, he warns about fluoride uh, being in the water. He's right about that. He tells you not to drink water around mealtime. Boy, I'm telling you, I didn't get it from him, but boy, him and I totally do agree on that one. It's absolutely true. You never drink water before, half an hour before, during, and half an hour to an hour afterwards. So we really have a lot of agreements here. It's the purified water that we really have the big disagreement on. And I'm making this video because it's Paul Bragg and all these guys out there in California in the, you know, in the 50s and 60s and into the 70s. These are the guys that got this purified water movement going. They thought pure water. We want pure vegetables, pure health, pure everything. Everything should be pure, including the water. So we'll purify it. Well, you know, I mean, you have to use something to purify the water, meaning you've got to use reverse osmosis. Or, or, or distillation, you got to get a water distiller. This is not anything, again, nothing found in nature. And for the millionth time, rainwater is not at all like purified water. If you just grab some rainwater and then go test it, go test the pH, or the TDS, I should say, or the, or the pH, but the, the t total dissolved solids that you're going to find in purified water or rainwater, in purified water, there'll be zero. And rainwater, you're going to see you got some stuff going on in there. So it, it, it is not pure and it's not the same thing. And so, and when it changes, because when you have purified water, what happens, you end up with a five-sided water molecule cluster. It's pentagonal. Maybe you've heard this uh, stuff out there. It's called pentawater. Pentawater gets its name from the five-sided water molecule cluster that the water molecules are put in, uh, are, are, are grouped into. That's what you find in distilled water. Well, that's a very odd shape. You're not going to find that shape in nature. You won't find the pentagon. You will find the hexagon. The hexagon's all over the place. And that's what ionized water is. It's hexagonal water, or hex water, or, or hexagonally shaped microcluster water. It's all got all sorts of different names to it. But you'll find the hexagon prevalent throughout nature. You see it in beehives and many other places. The fundamental shape, or just the shape that nature uses for the most efficient use of its energy. The air inside a bubble wants to fill the most area possible, but there's a force, surface tension, that wants to minimize the perimeter. And when bubbles join up, the best balance of fewer edges and mechanical stability is hexagonal packing. Is this enough to explain some of those six-sided patterns we see in nature? Basalt columns like Giant's Causeway, Devil's Post Pile, and the plains of Catan form from slowly cooling lava. Cooling pulls the rock to fill less space, just like surface tension it pulls on a soap film. Cracks form to release tension, to reach mechanical stability, and more energy is released per crack, so is nature a mathematician? Some scientists might say nature loves efficiency, or maybe that nature seeks out the lowest energy. And some people might say nature follows the rules of mathematics. However you look at it, nature definitely has a way of using simple rules to create elegant solutions. So when the nature wants to save energy, it goes down to the hexagon. You won't find a circle, you won't find a square, you won't find a triangle, you won't find any shape in nature, you'll find the hexagon. It's all over the place. And this is one of the big tip-offs that you'll find purified water is really not natural and it doesn't belong in the body. Okay. Like oral water and distilled water has absolutely no minerals in it. Uh, it's there's none, hardly any. When you drink this type of water, your body needs the minerals to break this cluster down, okay? It has to have these minerals. If you drink oral water or uh, distilled water, which is, has essentially no minerals in it, your body has to draw minerals from itself in order to be able to break these down. Now, I'm going to do a uh, video um, uh, here just a little bit explaining the absolute importance of minerals. In fact, in the 1920s and 1930s, Nobel laureate told everybody uh, in his research that most all disease can be uh, brought to mineral deficiency, can be tied directly to lack of mineral. Uh, next to to water and these sheets of easy layers begin to build and they build and build and they just keep building up one by one and 
So if you look at the structure of each one of these planes, you can see that it's a honeycomb, hexagonal kind of, of structure. Paul Bragg, uh, you know, and, and Norman Walker, and, you know, these early guys, Jack LaLanne, I mean, these, these are the guys that really gave us the, the modern, uh, you know, the health movement, the health product movement here in the U.S. It's still centered out in California for the most part. Every year I go out to the Natural Products Expo, uh, which started out in like in the late 1980s and now has grown into this just tremendous thing. All the big, the big food companies thought it was just a, a fad and that it would come and go and they're late to the game and they're scrambling now because natural health is here to stay because everybody wants to be healthy. But just make the point, these are great guys, are great gurus, Paul Bragg, uh, Jack LaLanne, Norman Walker, I mean, there's other ones, Bernard Jensen, he's really my main guy, I really like Bernard Jensen more than anybody, but, uh, you know, because he really knew so much about health, but when it comes down to water, uh, these are the guys, the, most of these guys, and several of them got it really wrong, and, and it's something when I say something about purified water, and you shouldn't drink it, boy do I get the comments, and they're really negative. So that's the way it goes. Bring them on. Dr. Bob, I'll see you next time.